We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sports Net, and it is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Coach Richard Wilson from Arkansas Baptist. The Buffaloes last season coach four and six, second NAIA season. I do want to talk about that as we go on through here, but uh, tell us a little bit about last season in 2022. Joey, it was a challenging season. It was actually our uh, second season with an independent schedule. Uh, when we started NAIA football, we actually uh, transitioned from junior college. And so uh, many of our junior college players felt as though they still want to live their dream. They thought they were ready for the SEC and the Big 12 and so on and so on. And so when we told them we were going to NAIA, they said, coach, thanks, but no thanks. And so what we ended up in 2021, we ended up with a group of uh, uh, freshmen that uh, really kind of got their teeth kicked in, but they stuck with us. They did a great job. Uh, they went through spring after the season. That first year, Joey, we ended up going, uh, I want to say three and eight. And uh, those young men uh, paid the price and they went through spring ball with us. Uh, they got bigger, faster, stronger. We went out and recruited uh, prep school players to try to mature the team up a little bit more and uh, ended up with a pretty good spring practice. After spring, I challenged the young man and I said, hey, guys, I think you got a chance to go 500 or better. I said, but, you know, we're just going to have to work harder than everybody else because we're going to play teams that are freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, and we're actually just going to be a freshman, sophomore group. But I think we can go 500. We feel like we've had a successful campaign. And so the they ended up four and six, but two of the games uh, that would have got us to 500 or better, we were actually ahead at halftime. We just were not able to close the deal. So we're excited about this upcoming year. Uh, we've got, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of depth coming back, but we've got guys who are experienced and that have at least been in the battle. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, we have a uh, quarterback coming back, Marlon Potterson. Marlon's from Atlanta, Georgia. Marlon did a, an exceptional job for us last year, but he was a freshman. Uh, he got better in spring, but we actually had a couple of transfer guys come in that, that pushed him very hard. We had a young man transfer in from Hutchinson Junior College, uh, Dewan King, uh, who is from Miami, Florida. Dewan had a good spring, and then we had another young man transfer in from uh, Junior College uh, in Mississippi, Damon, uh, Damon Mapp, and Damon had a, a good spring. And so we've developed competition at that quarterback position, and I think – uh, anybody who follows football uh, any amount of time knows that you've got to have a trigger guy and you've got to have a guy that can make things happen. And so uh, right now we've still got an interesting battle going at quarterback. And running back, I think we're pretty solid. Uh, we've got two guys who have been in the battle before. We have a young man, Tavian Ray, uh, who's from Mississippi, who did a great job for us last year. And then we had a transfer come in from uh, – uh, from uh, prep school, and his name is, uh, Ta uh, uh, excuse me, Tavian Rupert, and uh, Tavian had a good spring. So we feel exceptionally blessed with our running back situation. Uh, in the offensive line, well, we return our center, Malik Stubbs. Malik did a great job for us. We return our left tackle, uh, Deleon Madrea. Uh, Deleon's got a year of experience there at the left tackle. We're going to be new at the guard positions. We're going to have a, a young man, Trayvon Mason, who will be coming out of the guard position, and then Keontae starts. Both of them give us good size, but it's going to be their first time playing uh, the guard position. So it'll be a challenge in the guard position, but our tackle returns as a starter from last year at the right tackle, and uh, this name is Bradley Brown. So we feel like the offensive line is solid. Uh, we have to go out and recruit, and our biggest deal is going to be bringing in guys behind them that can back them up and be ready to play. Uh, we are going to be exceptionally young at receiver. Uh, probably our, our guy who's going to be the mainstream guy at receiver will be Chris Weatherspoon. Chris is uh, be a, a senior from the Memphis area, did a great job. He is a running back who converted out 
two wide receiver, but he is a special guy. And I'm looking for big things from Chris. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, probably our strong point has been our defensive line. Uh, though That's probably the only group that's been with us since 21. They started as freshmen, then they came again and they started last year. Sophomores, we're looking for them to have a big junior season. Uh, those four guys who play that down defensive line position uh, would be D'Angelo Baker, uh, Cordarius Linton, uh, Omar Rogers, and Jason Campbell. Looking for big things from those guys. Uh, Joey, we're going to have to sure up at the linebacker position. We're awful thin right now. We've got two guys that have some experience there. Uh, one guy is Hezekiah Gooley, and then the other guy is uh, Kyron Whaley. Uh, they give us some depth, but we've really got to get on the recruiting trail at inside linebacker. That's going to be a, a, a position where we have to beef up. Uh, one of the biggest challenges in, uh, since I've uh, been in this program has always been kicking game. Last year, we were able to go out and attract a young kicker here from the state of Arkansas. And uh, his name is uh, uh, David Onorve. Uh David is an uh, <laughs> exceptional guy. David wants to be one of the guys. You know, I keep telling him, I say, hey, man, I just want you to kick because he's pretty good. But, but David wants to make sure that if everybody else runs down and gets a tackle, that he gets down there and gets in the, in the mix. Well, uh, we won our first NAIA game this past year. David kicked, I want to say, two field goals, and boy, it was just so exciting to see him go out there and kick because we had never had that component in our program. Well, we are getting ready to play a JV game. And I tell David, I said, now, David, you're important to everything we're doing. I said, please do not cover the kickoff. All I want you to do is kick the ball and then you run to the sideline. Well, we're playing a JV game and David kicks off. He runs down, he gets involved in making the tackle. And all of a sudden I see the officials signal timeout. It's taken a long time to unpile everybody. Make a long story short, David gets in on the tackle and David breaks his ankle. And so we go back to square one in the kicking game, but David's done a great job rehabbing. And I think he's going to be back and rejoin us in the fall. So we're pretty excited about the prospects of where we can go as a program. You know, I try to be even keel with these guys and not try to get too high and don't try to get too low. I want them to have expectation levels, but at the same time, I want them to understand that we're playing other programs that, you know, have, are tried and tested. Uh, we're building as we go. And so uh, we're excited about this year, and uh, we just can't wait to see what's going to happen. Coach, I appreciate uh, the preview, and, and I've, I've learned a lot just in this amount of time, and I hope David is well and gets better <laughs> for you all. <laughs> so he, he's back and ready for the, the season, too. Yeah. Uh, we're visiting now with Coach Richard Wilson here on the Summit, and I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel Midwest Sportsnet as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. We're talking about Arkansas Baptist right now. Uh, Coach, uh, really quickly then, you, you made the transition. You were talking about that and uh, a two-year college, playing an independent schedule, it's going to be a little bit different this season than than the, the past two. But, you know, yeah, you, you mentioned recruiting a number of times and all, pretty much an all-freshman team two years ago, freshmen and sophomores. You're going to have some juniors on this squad. What kind of a luxury is that? And, and will you feel like uh, – what, what's it going to feel like having that kind of depth? Uh, it's it, – it's, uh, <laughs> well waited for in it. You know, and, and, and like I said, we, we've – I just want to see them get to the point where they feel like that they demand some respect because I think uh, when we started dealing with this group as freshmen and sophomores, they were all excited when they came in. And I talked with a couple of my buddies who were NAIA coaches, and I said, hey, give me the lay of the land. What happens when you're trying to build a program, especially one from scratch? And uh, they, they told me, they said, hey, you're going to have an influx of kids because you're, you're living on a social media day uh, where everybody has access to social media and internet. They're going to see that you got a new program. And he says, you're going to have kids just all over your program. He says, but watch and see. He says, when the season's over, you'll probably, when the smoke clears, he says, you might have 130 guys starting out 
in the fall. He says, you're going to have a core of about 40 guys that are going to stay. He said, because the other guys are going to, when the newness is worn off, they're going to move on. And uh, lo and behold, what this guy told me was exactly true. And so it's, it's really nice to get that group to the point where they're going to their junior year, you know, and, and to look at them and just see that they've got a little bit of a swagger about them. They feel like they're supposed to be here. They feel like that this is their team. They feel like they have something to prove. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this group. You know, I want to see how they're going to – uh, stack up against some of these other teams that we're going to play. Coach, last question is, as we look ahead to the season, it's not far away. It begins for you all on September 2nd as you'll be traveling to Houston, Houston Christian uh, to be taking on a Division One opponent. And then the independent part of the schedule goes away as you all are, are now affiliated with the Sooner Athletic Conference and conference play begins the next weekend, September 9th at Louisiana Christian. Talk about your schedule this year. Okay, it's, it's going to be a tough schedule, my, uh, Joe. It's going to be tough because, like we said, we go against a quality Division One opponent in Houston Christian, and, uh, you know, they're having a coaching change there. And uh, that that makes me nervous uh, because usually when you have a coaching change there, it means their administration well, was not happy with what was happening before. And and, and believe me now, that, that new coaching staff, they – they want to come in and make an example of somebody quick so, so that they can get the press and, you know, the people in charge behind them and feel like they're, they've are they got momentum going forward. So it's going to be a challenging game for us. I think our kids desire it because, uh, truth be known, most of them think that they were overlooked and, you know, they, they think that they should be in a division bigger than NAIA, NAIA. but I always tell them just like I, I told my junior college kids, sometimes you got to get in where you fit in. And once you find your niche, then it comes down to getting bigger, faster, stronger. And so don't worry about where you're at, just make the best of where you're at. And so that's going to be a challenging game, but it doesn't get any easier because after that, like you said, we have to go on the road and play Louisiana Christian, and they're they're a solid program. Uh, matter of fact, they uh, they beat a lot of people last year that uh, people didn't think that they were going to be. They were one of the programs I was mentioning to you that we were actually tied with or ahead of at halftime, but they put the burners on in the second half, and they separated from us. So that's going to be a challenging game. And then after that, we got to play Southwest Assembly of God's, uh, they had a new coaching staff change last year. Uh, their coach is uh, a former defensive lineman uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, he has done an exceptional job. They're just being there one year. And uh, they're, to me, they're one of the programs that we're going to have to beat if you want to talk about being champions in that Sooner Conference. Then we got to go out to Oklahoma Panhandle and play them. They just had a coaching change this year. So they'll have a new and fresh approach. Uh, we come home against Texas Wesleyan. Texas Wesleyan can score points. I mean, they can get up and down the field. So that'll be a challenge. Uh, then we get a chance to play Texas College. And that was the team that we had a chance to beat to win our first ever NAIA game. So Texas College, they'll have a chip on their shoulder because they feel like that, you know, they want to return the favor on us this year. Uh, after which that, we go out to Ottawa College in Arizona. Ottawa has been a powerhouse in the Sooner Conference. And so that'll be a challenge. It'll be our first time actually taking a plane flight. And so I'll have to see how our kids are going to react to that type of travel versus, you know, getting on the Greyhound bus every weekend. Uh, then we come back and we play Langston University. And uh, in my estimation, Langston is one of the teams that is – played us all three years in our transition to NAIA. And the only thing I can say about Langston is they will be on the hoof, one of the most athletic teams we'll see the whole year. I mean, they, they looked apart when they walk out on the field. And so uh, the first year we played them, <laughs> we went over there with the little freshman group and uh, they put their band right behind us. And uh, it was their homecoming game. And, you know, we, we got exposed. And so uh, uh, they beat us pretty bad. 
And uh, then last year when they came here to Little Rock, it was a totally different game. Our kids were embarrassed by what had happened the year before. So our kids bowed their back and played hard against them. And so if any of the teams there's beginning to be a little bit of a rivalry with, I'd have to say it's Langston. Uh, then after Langston, we play Wayland Baptist. Uh, they come to Little Rock and then we uh, play Centenary College. They're, they're starting a new program. And so Centenary will come and play us. And then we'll end the season with North American out of Houston. So it'll be a challenging uh, schedule, Joey. I mean, very, very challenging. Well, it definitely sounds like in Sooner Athletic Conference improving in football year to year. And by the way, I, I enjoy uh, taking the trip up to uh, watch Langston. We, we do a show up there occasionally pretty much every year. And, and yes, I, that was the only place you talked about the band. But there's a reason for that. So, yeah, they got a quality band up there. Coach, sounds like a fun season, but it sounds like an opportunity then for the Buffaloes as well as they are continuing to grow and you have uh, depth to the program now. We appreciate the preview of the season and we're going to be following you all this season. So our stop today in Little Rock with Coach Richard Wilson. Thank you so much today for visiting with us on the summit and success to you and to the Buffaloes this year. Joey, thank you so much. and We appreciate that uh, uh, someone like yourself has a passion uh, for smaller college football because these young men – put in a lot of time, a lot of dedication, and uh, it means a lot to them and it means a lot to me that you would take time to highlight our programs. And so thank you so much. Thank you, sir.